We read from the Gospel according to St Matthew, chapter 16, verses 24 to 27. Jesus said to his disciples, Whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For whoever wants to save their life will lose it. But whoever loses their life for me will find it. What good will it be for someone to gain the whole world, yet forfeit their soul? Or what can anyone give in exchange for their soul? May God help us to understand his word. Amen. Matthew chapter 16, verse 24. Then Jesus said to his disciples, Whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. These days, when we talk about bearing a cross, we're likely to be thinking about an annoying illness or perhaps an irritating relative. But in Jesus' day, the phrase meant what it said on the tin. It meant carrying the cross beam of your cross to a place of execution. We Christians in the affluent West talk about persecution if somebody calls us names or objects to the school our children attend teaching religion or holding a nativity play. We don't know the meaning of the word. Christians in Syria do. So do Christians in Pakistan, Egypt, North Korea, China and Nigeria and other places. They may be personally attacked or their churches may be destroyed or they may end up being locked up for long periods. For them, as for the first Christians, taking up your cross meant going to death for Christ. Would we be prepared to go that far? Commitment to Christ means more than giving up a few things we can do well without. It means giving up absolutely everything for God even life itself. Are we prepared to do that for him who gave up everything for us? Let us pray. Lord, you tell us in your word that we can do amazing things if we put our trust in you. We come now to say that we are sorry because we fail to take you at your word. We don't step out in faith because we are afraid that you won't be there. We hear your promises, but we don't always believe that they apply to us. When we look at Jesus, we see that he trusted you so much that he died on the cross for us believing that you could raise him from the dead. We thank you for the forgiveness that comes to us through him and for his example of faith. Help us to become more like Jesus and to put our trust in you for everything we need. In Jesus' name. Amen. In Jesus we behold the eternal glory of God and we see what the love of God holds in store for his faithful ones. With renewed confidence let us bring our prayers to God. We pray for those in the church who suffer persecution in the name and for the sake of Christ. Let them be supported by God's grace and by our prayers. 
let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for those who make our laws and those who enforce them. May they always act with justice and concern for the common good. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for those who are ill and for those who care for them at home and in hospital. Grant courage and hope to the sick and inspire their carers with your Holy Spirit. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. In Jesus' name. Amen. O oh Jesus, I have promised to serve thee to the end. Be thou forever near me my master and my friend i shall not fear the battle if thou art by my side no wonder from the pathway if thou wilt be my guide oh let me feel thee near me the world is ever near I see the sights that dazzle the tempting sounds I hear my foes are ever near me around me and within but Jesus draw thou nearer and shield my soul from sin Oh, let me hear thee speaking in accents clear and still above the storms of passion the murmurs of self-will oh speak to reassure me to hasten or control oh speak and make me listen Thou guardian of my soul. O Jesus, thou hast promised to all who follow thee that where thou art in glory, there shall thy servant be. And Jesus, I have promised to serve thee to the end. Oh, give me grace to follow my master and my friend. Oh, give me grace to follow my master and my friend.